Hi and welcome back to Purple Color Life. Here in Northwest Pennsylvania, the heat wave continues. It is 10 o'clock at night and it's still over 80 degrees here in Northwest Pennsylvania, Fahrenheit. That's too hot for me. But that means we're taking a lot of trips to the lake and doing a lot of boating, which feels great. But it's also doing a lot of miles on our big F-350 truck with the Godzilla 7.3 engine. For those of you who have never watched the channel before, I've done videos in the past on the camshaft and lifter failures on these Godzillas, as well as the transmission issue which we experienced. I'm going to do an update video uh, coming up shortly on the transmission update. I think it might surprise some of you, and some of you may not be surprised at all. Um, but today, we're going to do an oil change here in the truck, and I might have been doing this wrong or misleading you guys. I kept saying Motorcraft oil, Motorcraft filters, that's the only way to make sure your warranty doesn't get voided if you have an issue with the camshaft or the lifters. I think I was wrong on that. Let's talk about it. So it is time for an oil change with the Godzilla and I'm going to do that oil change today. But I've been using the Motorcraft synthetic blend. I learned some stuff about that recently that I'm not a huge fan of. I did recently a oil change in the Ford Ranger and I switched to Amsoil. Uh, the high mileage synthetic oil and in this truck i'm switching to ams oil for it too and let me tell you why so like i said i've always been worried about the warranty so i thought i've got to keep using this motorcraft fl 820s filter and i've got to keep using that motorcraft synthetic blend oil because right in the manual it says use the motorcraft synthetic blend so according to the manual for this godzilla engine it says that the oil must be uh, spec wss m 2C961A1. And you look at the back of that Motorcraft Synthetic Blend oil and it says that's the spec it's to. Like I said, the manual says to use that oil. And I kept thinking, well, I've got to use that oil to be under warranty. This truck does have the extended warranty because we bought it used and it was a gold certified blue oval used warranty that covers us up through 100,000 miles. I've mentioned that because our great Dane is sick, she comes with us everywhere we go, which means sometimes she stays in the truck with it idling for 10, 15 minutes straight at a time while we're doing something else. And then, you know, it could be an hour long trip back if we're going to camp. So there's a lot of idle time on this truck throughout the winter and now in the summertime. And I'll put a link to that video up above about where I talked about the cam and lifter failures and my thoughts on that. I have read a lot that it's more of the chassis cab trucks that do a lot of idling. Like I said, we do our fair share of idling in this crew cab long bed F-350. But I also thought, you know, yes, it'll be covered under warranty, but it's a huge hassle. If I can avoid having that cam and lifter failure or put it off forever, that would be great. So I'm making the switch just to give it a try to this Amsoil Signature Series. This is a full synthetic and surprise, surprise, if you look at the back of it, it does meet that spec that's required by Ford. So I reached out to the service department at a local Ford dealership and I said, hey, what happens if I have engine failure or the cam and lifter failure and I haven't used the Motorcraft oil? And they said, that's not a big deal. Um, again, do your own research, check with your own dealership but the local one here said not a big deal as long as you can prove you've used oil that meets the specs and you've changed it at the intervals recommended by the manual so we are changing it at the recommended intervals and we're using the oil that meets the specs my hope is that this protects the engine even better than that motorcraft synthetic blend that i don't really know how much of it's synthetic and how much of it's conventional this full synthetic i think should lubricate and cool and keep the engine lasting better uh, in the long run just my two cents. So if you are watching this as a how to do the oil change, I'm not gonna go exactly step by step through, but you might just open the hood and be like, how can I change the oil? I don't even see the oil fill. It is actually way down there and it's a tiny little lid. So it does have the little oil fill marker on it, but that is the smallest oil fill I've seen on the largest displacement V8 engine I've ever owned. So I'm using a milk crate to stand on the front bumper to be able to reach back far enough and you can see I did put a funnel into the oil fill. I'm going to go ahead and pull the dipstick out which is right here. 
just to let the engine breathe a little better while we drain the oil. So in order to complete this oil change, you need some tools. I like to get those all out and ready. I've got my new AMS oil filter. This is EA011. I'll put a link in the description where I get my AMS oil. And then if you'd like to order from that same place, I've dealt with Mark and he's great to deal with. It takes eight quarts. I'm using the AMS oil synthetic blend signature series uh, 5W30. And again, it does meet the spec required by Ford. I've got this light. This is my rigid 18 volt light. I'll put Amazon affiliate links to some of these things down below if you need to order them. And then I've got the drain pan that'll hold at least eight quarts of oil, the 13 millimeter socket, and my oil wrench just in case I can't get that filter off. Just like the oil change in the Ranger, I pull up on a couple blocks to get the oil draining to the right side and towards the back of the oil drain pan. And it also makes it easier for me to slide underneath on the creeper. The nice thing is everything's pretty easy to get to underneath here. There is my oil pan with the drain plug. And then just to the side of it is the oil filter. We'll take that drain plug off first and let the oil drain into our pan. 13 millimeters. I think I'm going to put something here to deflect this. It looks like that's all going to hit this cooler or whatever this is. That may make it more messy, but I was running the truck a little bit to get it here in the garage, so it is warm. Hopefully not hot. Oh, my deflector did help. So I'd say that was a good idea. Okay, since we're back to just getting a drip every once in a while, I'm gonna take my deflector chute out. And go ahead and put a drain plug back in. That deflector chute was a great idea. That all would have come out and hit right here. I just like to tighten it up about that much, and then if I need to do more later, I can. What are the chances I can spin this off by hand? Not good. Turn it a tiny bit. This is where one of those tools where you put it over the bottom would probably be better than this type of strap. drain lined up here it's probably gonna be messy
Yep, that was messy. Now Mark from Amsoil actually recommended that I fill the filter up as much as I can, so I've done that. It does have, it's full of oil, which also got the gasket. But I was just taking a look up here and the gasket from the old filter actually stayed on. So I'm glad I caught that. That would have been a problem still being up there. I do keep track of my oil changes by date on YouTube, so June 22nd is when I put the new oil and filter. Okay, now eight quarts of oil. It was going to be a lot of climbing up and down, and I don't like to step on the bumper that long. First of all, it's not a very big step and it can get slippery, but second of all, I don't want to scuff up the bumper. So I moved the step ladder over here. I'm going to stand on the step ladder to put my eight quarts of oil inside the engine. Now first I'm going to put the rest of that quart that I had put in the filter in. And Mark said that just keeps that air bubble from passing the whole way through the engine. So you put the oil in the filter as much as you can. When the filters are oriented like that upright, it actually makes it pretty easy to fill the filter up and then screw it on. I'm really glad I noticed that gasket from the old filter though. That's the first time that's ever happened to me where the uh, old gasket had stuck. We'll let that drip out while we get the next one ready. You have to use a very small funnel with that very small oil fill in this engine. Another weird thing. You would think Ford would have put a better fill on an engine this big. I'm going to put the other seven quarts in. You don't have to watch them all. But then we'll wrap up here afterward. I might have to get a bigger small funnel at some point because it's hard to lean over here and hit it every single time and you got to pour slow because it's such a narrow funnel i do like pouring these individual quarts better than the four quart jugs especially in a small funnel like this so again before you make a change check with the ford dealership in your area just to make sure, but I don't believe there's any way they could void your warranty for using an oil that meets or exceeds the specs and it's listed right on the bottle. Obviously they would like you to use the Motorcraft oil and I have had decent luck with that Motorcraft oil. I've never had to replace an engine before. But at the same time, with people having these cam and lifter failures, I wanted to get the best possible oil to try to prevent that from happening in our truck. And to me, the full synthetic Signature Series is a better option than that Motorcraft synthetic blend. It is now 10.15 at night and it is still 80 degrees out. Like I said before, too hot for me. This is not my kind of weather. If you guys live in the upper Michigan or Montana, Upper Washington. Let me know what the nighttime temperature is in your area. That one almost missed. So we're going to try opening this filter in another video. Make sure you tune into that video. I've got to let that one get all the junk off of it and let it drain out completely before we do that. So we won't do it tonight. But in a future video, we'll cut that open. And we're looking in the pleats of that filter for any of that metallic fleck that get caught in the filter. It would be a leading indicator of potential cam and lifter delamination or failure. Four bottles in, four bottles to go. Again, this is the 7.3 liter Godzilla in our 2020 F350 Ford Super Duty truck. 8 quarts of oil is a lot, but it's a lot less than the 15 quarts I used to put in my old Power Stroke. Oops, spilled a little bit right there. I was 
trying so hard not to do that. Leaning over the ladder, leaning clear back here. You can see how close we are to the firewall of the engine. This oil fill is pretty far back. Tiny little funnel. I guess I'm just full of complaints. So this is our eighth quart. We'll put that in. We're gonna start up the engine. Let it run a second, check the oil pressure. Shut it off, let it sit for about 10 minutes, 15 maybe. Let the oil drain back down through and then we'll check the level on the dipstick. I might have a title that says something like that I just void my warranty. And while that's a little bit of a clickbait title, not exactly because that's been a fear of mine for a while with this engine. If I used anything other than Ford Motorcraft oil, would it void my warranty? If I had anybody other than the dealership change it, could that void my warranty? But I think by documenting, and video is part of that documentation, documenting when I changed the oil, that I used an oil that meets the specs required, and that I'm changing it uh, at the regular intervals as recommended, I think I should be all set. But I would love to know your thoughts on the topic. Do you think I just put my warranty in jeopardy? My 100,000 mile warranty, that I just jeopardize it by using AMS oil? Leave those comments down below. And if you've had that cam or delamination failure, which I know several people that watch our channel have, leave a comment down below. Did they ask you how often you change the oil? What oil you use? Did you ever change the oil yourself? Did you use anything other than Motocraft? I would be interested to know those answers, as I'm sure with the other people watching this video. Our truck is in good need of a bath. That's gonna happen tomorrow. But even when it's dirty, it still looks sharp. Now I'm not normally a person who drips sweat, but here it is almost 11 o'clock at night now, and I am just soaked in dripping sweat. Like I said, I'm not usually someone that leaks. Tonight, in this humidity and this heat, I am someone who leaks. If you found this video informative and entertaining, please give us a big thumbs up. Leave those comments down to know. I'm really anxious to read what you guys think about warranties and using the oil that's not the manufacturer's brand. Like if you have a Dodge, do you only use Mopar? I'm sorry, if you have a Ram, do you only use Mopar oils? Curious to know. I think I did the right thing here by switching to an oil that I think is better than that Motocraft synthetic blend. Will it cause me problems in the future if I have an issue with the engine? Let's hope we never find out because let's hope this engine goes 100,000, 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles without a problem. And thank you so much for watching the video, sticking through to the end here, clicking that like button, leaving a comment. Those things all help out the channel and we really appreciate your support. To get down in there with this tiny, tiny little cap. Just to show you how this cap goes in, there's like a notch it slides into, and then it's only about a quarter turn to get it in place. Ah, the hood is so high. To grab it from the side here. Get the parking brake off.